this high point, we've been calling the dike. It's a relatively high point grass area where we've been seeing these bucks all week. Our strategy this morning was just to get in here. We, we walked in here at 4 a.m., took a nap in the dark. Alright, we uh taking a little break here on day five, our last day of the hunt, and I thought what we could do is, you've, you've seen some of the footage, some of the deer we've had uh, the opportunity to chase. We haven't put one down yet, we still have a half day left, but uh, Miles, I thought you could share with the audience a little bit more about, we're obviously hunting mule deer with outdoor expeditions, but even broaden that out to Atkinson expeditions. What types of species do you cover, um, and what types of hunts do you cover? We cover basically everything you can hunt in Colorado uh, you know we do mule deer all over the eastern plains and in northern Colorado uh, whitetail in the eastern plains elk in northern Colorado antelope all over the east and in northern Colorado um, we get up in Wyoming do mule deer and antelope up there uh, we also have Kansas whitetails uh, southeast Kansas so we you know our outfits pretty broad we've got a little bit for everybody um, you know, if you can think of it, we can hunt it somewhere. Well, we are here on uh, day five. What's kind of been your take on the hunt? You know, it's, it's been a pretty typical Eastern Plains hunt. It's, it's tough out here, it's flat, it's hard to stalk, but the deer are giant. If, if you're looking for a buck of a lifetime, this is a great place to find him. But you, you've got to be very patient and you've got to be willing to Maybe go home without one if you're using archery equipment or muzzleloader even. You know, I mean, you can run into stuff. Today we're trying to find a buck and a monster that we've never seen before just runs us over. I mean, we literally, <laughs> he almost ran us over. Out of nowhere, yeah. So, and that was a huge deer. Yeah, well, I think um, I'm not ready to go home empty-handed yet. We still have a half day, so let's get after it. out here on our Colorado mule deer hunt and what Matt and I thought we would do is take some time to go through the pack choices we made for this trip. On this trip I actually chose to carry my Badlands Super Day and Matt has the game plan gear spot and stock pack. Wasn't needing to carry too much on this trip. The construction is very similar to what I'm used to in some of my bigger packs, my 2800, my 4500. That's a Super Day and that's what I went with on this trip. My choice for this trip was the game plan gear spot and stock. What's nice about the spot and stock is it has a rangefinder pouch that's uh, real accessible uh, for quick ranging. Also, you can spin the pack to access anything that you need while it's still on without doing a lot of moving around. It's a real good pack for these uh, grab and go quick hunts when you're spotting the stock out of here. So uh, those are the two packs we chose. You know, a couple, I'll point out a couple things I don't like about each of these packs. Um, I don't think I made the best choice. I actually think Matt made a better choice for this hunt. Um, the Super Day is great when you're doing a lot of upright, so those those day elk trips and that kind of stuff, it's the right size, it's comfortable, it's accessible. However, on these types of hunts when you're spotting and stalking, and you might have seen some of this in the footage that we, we filmed, this profile is really sticking up when we're trying to get through sometimes six inches of grass, a foot of grass, 
Um, so that's one thing that I didn't like about this. And as far as the spot and stalk, you know, you've heard me talk about using this for antelope. Um, the only negative I have is I'd really like to see this made in, in Max 1 to kind of match the camo. That best, uh, best uh, camouflages us in this open terrain. But uh, other than that, both great choices. And we'll get back to hunting now. See ya. So we're here the afternoon of day five, and we never did find that uh, new buck that kind of came in this morning. Um, and now we're actually looking at a new piece of property. Miles actually got us into another area that's been kind of tough to get to with the roads being as muddy as they were. We got the snow right before we came out, and uh, a little bit of wind yesterday dried those up. So we're just here glassing. I haven't seen a ton of deer up and running around this afternoon, but uh, they will be able to pull off a last day, last minute miracle, so we'll see how it goes. Well, we only have an hour of sunlight left, and uh, this is the time you pull out all the stop stops. We had a herd of deer behind us, uh, ranging at 200 and 214 yards, 214 and two bucks. Just really didn't have any train to work with, so we thought we'd get the Montana decoy out and just crest it up over this hill. And uh, they stood for a little while, but then uh, that buck rounded them up and took them over to the next block property, so. And we'll close out Bowcast in the Field 2009. I hope we can do this again. Um, but I want to thank Outdoor Expeditions for allowing us to hunt these properties they have leased. And uh, Miles, especially, big thank you to you. Thanks for getting us on some great deer. Yeah, thanks, bud. Next year, hopefully, uh, hopefully we'll have a little bit more to show for it. That's right. Besides worn out and muddy knees. Good to see you next year.